even in remote and harsh environments. It is very fruitful for, for science to discover important data about our planet Earth. And I expect the same on the Moon. I'm happy to be back in the Columbus module. It's in a space that is not a window. This one looks way fancier than the real one in space. So it's full of, of yeah, storage. And my bed is missing. My bed is here. I was there. <laughs> Well, I was there, the bed is still there, so I say. <laughs> in 21 I launched to the ISS in November and I came back in, in May 22, so I spent six months on the International Space Station. Well, we laughed every day on the ISS. I had such a splendid team with me. We started as, uh, as colleagues and we came back as a space family. You need to fulfill several conditions before you can become an astronaut or before you can fly to space. And uh, which means like you need to be of a good health and uh, in a certain fitness. But the most important part is to have a social compatibility, to be with other people who come from other nations, speak other languages, have another cultural background in a confined environment for many, many months. So actually it's the human interaction is one of the most critical part of deep space exploration. Currently we fly to the International Space Station in the near future, also to the Moon and hopefully in the long term also we will send humans to Mars. And we need to consider that these environments are actually not made for humans. So in space we have vacuum, we have space radiation and um, we need to bring everything to make human life possible, which means we need to protect the humans. We need to also make sure that we have oxygen to breathe, that we have a pressure environment because in vacuum the humans will not survive and that we protect also the astronauts against space radiation. Then we need the entire logistic chain. Uh, we need food, uh, we also need like clothing and uh, experiments for working, we need spare parts for our machinery. So it's a lot of logistics that we need to master before we can, can send humans to space. We decided to set up in Cologne at the European Astronaut Center site the best facility worldwide uh, to prepare for moon missions. This facility is called Luna and it is a platform where we will have lunar regolith, the, the moon sand, where we will have moon light conditions and where we can also use certain conditions where we can freeze the ground to drill and take samples as in the polar regions where we can assess um, the behavior between the moon sand and the and the moon suits that we have, the astronaut suits, because like the dust environment, it is very abrasive, very harsh. We will have the best conditions to assess this one there. And we will have a gravity offloading system, so we can actually train under almost near moon conditions. So I expect that before we send NASA astronauts, European astronauts towards the moon, they will first come to Cologne and uh, assess the entire mission end to end everything on the surface in Cologne before we send them to the Moon. Currently ESA has already three flights to the Moon as a part of the agreement between NASA and ESA and we are currently six European astronauts who can be selected for these three missions. So we will fly out there and we will set up a small house on the Moon, initially maybe for four astronauts. And these astronaut researchers will learn a lot, perform a lot of experiments and we will evaluate this data and I'm pretty sure we will decide oh we need more researchers on the surface of the moon because what they are achieving as science output is absolutely relevant for our planet earth and I'm absolutely looking forward to fulfill my third big dream the first one was riding on a rocket to space the second one was opening the door of the space station and to perform a spacewalk and my third big dream would be to explore the surface of the moon